All right, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, strategic ways, algebraic ways. Uh, first and foremost, we could guess and check here, right? Because the answer choices represent something very simple. They are the values of K. So we could plug those in for X. And then we could see if when we resolve the absolute value thing, we get a number that is the, the answer choice times three, right? So we could guess and check here. Um, I don't think that's gonna be super easy because the answer choices are mostly weird. So I'm not gonna show you that method, but it's possible. Um, we also have the ability to kind of play around with Desmos because it's a really powerful calculator. So here's what happens if you enter the two equations that they give us, just literally as is, right? f of x equals the absolute value of 59 minus 2x and f of k equals 3k. So what the calculator is doing is it kind of knows that k means x here. So it's graphing that as basically a straight line. Where's my other thing though? Well, if we scroll, we can start to see our absolute value and it makes the familiar absolute value shape, which is a, a V. Um, and there's an intersection. And if we tap the intersection point, the uh, value is 11.835.4. You kind of see, okay, well, the, the X is the 11.8 or the K is the 11.8. And then three times that, roughly three times 11 is 33. So we're getting kind of the 35.4 there. So what is 11.8? Well, if we go to our answer choices, we could just maybe put them in the calculator and see what the decimal equivalent is. And 59 divided by five, well, it's 11.8. And that's the answer. So we could just do that. There's really no reason to deal with any algebra here because it's basically a system of equations. And Desmos just graphs the two equations and then because it's so easy to tap the intersection point, that's that, we're done. Um, I really like that method because otherwise absolute value can kind of be a pain. I'm gonna show you the algebra though because it's not so bad considering we're at question 20. So what we would basically do here is a version of plug points into equations, right? That's kind of what this is, where X is K and Y or F of X is the three K. So uh, if we were to rewrite this, we have three K is equal to the absolute value of 59 minus 2k. And with absolute value equations, when we want to solve them, we need to make two equations. So I would split this uh, into two. One is going to be the more straightforward, just drop those absolute value bars and it's gone. And then I can do that because there's nothing else on that right side, right? It's just the absolute value. If there's other stuff, I've got to move it over first. But here, that's one version of the equation. The other version is to just do the same thing, but it's negative. So negative 3k is equal to 59 minus 2k. And remember why that works is um, absolute value will take whatever's in those like special parentheses and make them positive. So if negative 3k were in those parentheses, it would have become the positive 3k that we see on that left side of the equation. But in terms of solving now, uh, let's just start with the easy one. Let's start with the left side, right? I would add 2k to both sides to get k kind of combined. So 5k is equal to 59 and then just divide by five. And I could put that in the calculator, but most of the answer choices are fractions. So I would just go, oh, 59 over five. Hey, that's, that's what I got. So this is why I'm saying the algebra is not so bad, but I think for many of you, it, it feels like it's gonna be risky because you have the absolute value, which you just don't work with very often. You feel uncomfortable doing stuff with it. But I will finish the algebra here just as a mini lesson. How would we deal with this other equation? Well, we would just still solve it. So we would add 2K to both sides, but notice it's gonna to start to diverge from the other one here. So this is negative K is equal to 59. And then we would divide or multiply by negative one. So in this case, K would be negative 59. Um, and in theory, that's also an answer. I guess it kind of matches a little bit with D. Um, does that graph on this? I don't see that here though. That's the thing, because I don't, that doesn't exist here. So negative 59, I wonder, yeah, it's not on there. So I don't know, why doesn't it work? Maybe there's something to do with like plugging it back in. Let's, let's check that in the original equation. I'm just curious. I've already solved the question, but so uh, the absolute value of 59 minus two times negative 59 would be the absolute value of 59 plus two times 59 is 118. 
So the absolute value, oh, I see why, 59 plus 118 is 177. So the absolute value of 177 is 177. And that's supposed to be equal to 3 times negative 59. So why didn't it work? Because 3 times negative 59, that negative is not going to disappear. That's negative 177 equals positive 177. This is a good example of an extraneous solution. Another thing that we don't really worry about too much, we have normal algebra, but we have radicals, absolute values, things that kind of have weird properties. We sometimes get answers that don't work. So look, that, that didn't matter, right? This was a waste of time in a sense. Um, but hopefully, you, if you do get these situations again, we have absolute value, you at least know that the way to solve it is to split it into two equations. This might happen where you get like a fake answer from one of those equations, but that's at least the starting point is that you've got like the positive version and the negative version of that equation. But yeah, this is all the more reason, this algebra is all the more reason to just let Desmos do the work, plug it in, you can use the letters that they give you and, and there's a way to enter any letter you need. So it really just solves this hard question for you in just a matter of seconds if you just take the time to enter it and see what happens. Um, I think that's a big win and a hard question.